Next up, we have Dr. Chan Wan Sien. Dr. Chan is a cardiologist at both Mount Elizabeth Hospitals, Glen Eagles Hospital and Parkway East Hospital. Her clinical expertise includes heart failure and management of patients with mechanical hearts and cardiac imaging, including echocardiography and nuclear cardiography techniques. Today, she will be presenting on the topic, Cardio-Oncology, Risk Prediction and Surveillance for Cardiotoxicity in Cancer Patients. Let's welcome Dr. Chan. Hi everybody, I'll be speaking on cardiovascular care in cancer patients, focusing on the risk evaluation and surveillance for cardiotoxicity while the patient receives cancer treatment. Cardio-oncology has gained its importance in the past decade, and the reason is that tumours are actually associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease. At the same time, with the use of novel life-saving targeted immunologic cancer therapies, there is now being recognised that there is increased cardiovascular off-target toxicities involving heart failure, myocarditis, as well as hypertension. And with improved treatment, there is now an increasing cohort of cancer survivors, and this group of patients require management in terms of their cardiovascular condition. Cancer and cardiovascular diseases are two leading causes of mortality worldwide. In the past, thought of as two separate entities, these two conditions, cancer and cardiovascular disease, actually share many risk factors. At the same time, with emerging evidence, it is found that these two conditions actually has got shared biology and underlying pathogenesis processes involving inflammation, oxidative stress, reactive oxygen species, and underlying metabolic reactions that are linked to both diseases. This is to show that cardiovascular diseases increases incidence of various types of cancer, and conditions such as myocardial infarction and heart failure actually increases various types of cancer. Since it is very common that cardiovascular condition and cancer can coexist in the same patient, it is therefore important that prior to starting cancer therapy, cancer patients should undergo baseline cardiovascular evaluation, looking at evaluating cardiovascular risk factors and assessing for pre-existing underlying cardiovascular condition. At the same time, it is important to understand the tumour type, the tumour biology and the choice of cancer treatment in this group of patients and the associated cardiotoxicity. Once cardiovascular assessment is done with a baseline risk stratification, we could provide primary and secondary prevention strategies, a structured and personalised surveillance while the, while the patients receive cancer treatment and long-term survivor surveillance in this group of patients since many of them would experience cancer therapy-induced cardiotoxicity as well as pre-existing cardiovascular condition. This view of medicine has got limited trials and evidence. However, the last few months, the European Society of Cardiology published a guideline providing guidance on the management of cardiovascular conditions in cancer patients. It is important at the baseline to assess for the baseline cardiovascular risk looking at patient's cardiovascular risk factors, previous pre-existing cardiovascular condition, whether the patient has got previous cardiotoxic therapies, and taking into account the cancer therapy treatment that's being used and their associated cardiotoxicity. With that, the approach to cardiovascular risk assessment would further involve further evaluation, including a clinical assessment, physical examination, typically involving further evaluation with an ECG, blood test for biomarkers and transthoracic echo to assess for the heart function using LVEF as well as subclinical LV dysfunction with GLS or global longitudinal stream. Depending on the cancer therapies and chemotherapy agents being used and their cardiotoxicity involved, different arrangements in terms of cardiovascular assessment with blood tests and transthoracic echo can be arranged. This is the baseline risk assessment templates for anthracycline chemotherapy as well as HER2 targeted chemotherapy from a position statement of the heart failure group of the ESC as well as the International Cardio-Oncology Society. Taking into account various risk factors, a risk stratification is performed and a risk level is being designated to the patients. Depending on the likelihood of cancer therapy related cardiotoxicity, and the clinical severity that's being involved with the cardiotoxicity. In patients who are high risk or very high risk, it is important to refer to a cardiologist for baseline risk assessment. And discussion could be done with 
between cardio, cardiologists and oncologists and involving the specialists that are involved in the care of the patients to decide on the best balance in terms of the cardiovascular risk as well as the cardiotoxic cancer therapy that has to be used. At the same time, in high-risk group of patients, cardioprotective strategies involving use of certain medications like ARB and ACE inhibitor and beta blockers can be employed prior to starting cancer treatment. In low-risk and moderate-risk group of patients, patients can continue routine oncology follow-up with a close monitoring, and if any symptoms and side effects develop in terms of ECG changes or echo changes, cardiology referral can be initiated. Once risk profile is being assessed and stratified, patient can receive primary and secondary prevention strategies. In high-risk group of patients, sometimes may require the adjustment of the dose of cardiotoxic drugs and the regimen. And medications involving cardioprotective agents such as ACE inhibitor, ARB or beta blockers can be used prior to starting cancer treatment. One cancer therapy are being started. It is important to provide continuous surveillance for this group of patients who are receiving cancer therapies who may have cardiotoxicities. I'm going to go through several cardiotoxicities that are common in, in patients who receive cancer therapies. The first one is that of cardiac dysfunction. Cancer therapy-related cardiac dysfunction can be defined looking at LVEF, global longitudinal strain. So a drop in terms of GLS by more than 15% as well as a new rise in biomarkers with a preserved LVEF will be mild toxicity. In severe toxicity, we'll see a drop in terms of LVEF or down to less than 40%. There are two agents that commonly causes cardiac dysfunction, antracycline as well as HER2-targeted therapies. For antracycline chemotherapy agent, it is commonly used in treatment of solid and hematological cancer. This agent has got dose-dependent cardiotoxicity, and if used with other cancer treatment like Herceptin as well as radiation therapy, there is increase in risk of the cardiotoxicity. Patients receiving antracycline chemotherapy agents needs to be assessed at baseline, at the same time followed through during their cancer therapy. In high-risk group of patients, ECG, transthoracic echo, and cardiac biomarkers in terms of blood tests will be done at regular intervals to monitor for cardiac dysfunction. Similarly, for HER2 receptors therapies, this group of medication is associated with cardiac dysfunction. It is commonly used in the treatment of breast cancer as well as gastrointestinal cancer. It may lead to LV dysfunction in 15-20% to in this group of patients. It is important to pick up subclinical cardiac dysfunction early in this group of patients, otherwise progression to avert clinical heart failure will occur. For this group of patients, it is advised that a baseline ECG transthoracic echo and bio cardiac biomarkers are done for high-risk group of patients. And for patients receiving this medication, it is advised to have transthoracic echo at regular intervals and for high-risk group, even regular measurements of cardiac biomarkers. For patients who develop cardiac dysfunction while receiving antracycline, in the severe group, the medication needs to be discontinued. In patients who have moderate cardiac dysfunction, this medication has to be stopped transiently and await the improvement of LV function and thereafter restart if necessary after a discussion with the multidisciplinary team. In HER2 targeted therapies for patients who have got moderate to severe cardiotoxicity that develops during cancer treatment, it is important to stop the medication transiently and await improvement in terms of the LE function, at least up to more than 40%, before rediscussion if the medicine, if the chemotherapy agent could be recontinued and restarted. The immune checkpoint inhibitors are increasingly being used in cancer therapy treatment due to its unprecedented cancer treatment effects. However, this group of medication has been associated with various cardiovascular conditions due to its augmented immune response. One of them is immune checkpoint inhibitors myocarditis, incidence being in the range of 0.3 to 1%. It is a severe complication with high mortality rate and usually develops during the first 12 weeks of the treatment. In a large case series, there's up to 50% mortality rate in patients who develop immune checkpoint inhibitors myocarditis. 
Therefore, in patients receiving immune checkpoints inhibitors, it is important to provide a surveillance protocol for this group of patients. At baseline, they should have baseline cardiovascular assessment, ECG, as well as cardiobiomarkers blood tests. In high-risk group of patients, it is important to do a baseline transthoracic echo and to follow through this group of patients with regular cardiobiomarkers in terms of blood tests. In the event of fulminant myocarditis in patients receiving immune checkpoint inhibitors, the treatment will be high-dose methylprednisolone steroids and patient needs to be closely monitored in the ICU setting for further deterioration. Hypertension is a common adverse effect in patients receiving VEGF inhibitors as well as proteasome inhibitors. Therefore, in this group of patients, it is important for a baseline cardiovascular assessment, ECG, as well as daily blood pressure monitoring when the patient goes through cancer treatment with these medications. At the same time, with every increase in dose of this treatment, it is important to do regular blood pressure monitoring. And once they are more stable, then at a wider interval of two to three weeks. The target blood pressure for hypertension in patients receiving cancer treatment is less than 140 over 90. If patients experience blood pressure of more than 180 and diastolic more than 110, it's important to actually stop the medication early and allow and start treatment of hypertension. The first line of treatment would be ACE inhibitor and ARB. Once hypertensive treatment is started and blood pressure is controlled down to less than 160 over 100, the chemotherapy agents can be restarted in patients for cancer treatment. Certain cancer treatment predisposes to acute coronary syndrome by accelerated atherosclerosis process, plug rupture, vasospasm, as well as coronary thrombosis. In cancer presentation of acute coronary syndrome can be atypical or masked by cancer as well as therapy-related side effects. This group of patients should receive treatment according to the general cardiology guidelines for STEMI and NSTEMI if the life expectancy is more than or equals to six months. Upon completion of cancer therapy, it is important to continue further monitoring surveillance for cardiotoxicity, especially in the first one year after completion. As seen in this prospective study, the overall incidence of cancer therapy-related cardiotoxicity is 9%, and up to 98% of cancer could be detected 12 months after completion of therapies, and the median time is that of three and a half months. In fact, in high-risk patients, it's important that within the first 12 months, regular assessment, including clinical as well as ECG and echo, may be required in patients who are high risk. So which are the cancer survivors who require cardiovascular surveillance in the first one year after cancer treatment? This includes patients who have high risk and very high risk baseline cardiovascular risk, patient who has received cardiotoxic cancer treatment with a high risk of long-term cardiovascular complication, including high accumulative dose of anthracycline, high dose of radiation therapy, or a combination of anthracycline and radiation therapy used in their cancer treatment, patients who develop moderate or severe cancer therapy-related cardiovascular toxicity during their treatment, including patients with arrhythmia, heart failure, and vascular toxicity, and in any of the patients who during the surveillance process develop new symptoms, new changes on ECG, biomarkers, or transthoracic echo. In patients who develop moderate to severe cardiotoxicity during their cancer therapy treatment, it is actually important to put them through a structured assessment during the first one year after the completion. This may include clinical assessment, ECG, transthoracic echo, and cardiac biomarkers at, re at regular time intervals. There's now an increasing cohort of cancer survivors due to improvement in terms of cancer therapy treatment. In all cancer survivors, it is important to monitor them in the long term for cardiovascular risk. Recommendation would be to do an annual cardiovascular risk assessment. And if any symptoms develop or any changes in terms of cardiovascular risk, to dealt with as appropriately. In patients who are high risk, that will include patients who receive cancer therapy who has got pre-existing cardiovascular condition or cancer therapy-related cardiotoxicity. It's important that they be put through regular surveillance and assessment, which may include use of ECG and transthoracic echo at regular interval. Many of the cancer survivors will experience cancer-related or cancer therapy-related late effects throughout their lives. 
In some types of cancer, the cardiovascular risk and condition risk actually exceed cancer mortality and reduces the life expectancy and quality of life in this group of patients. Although it's important to reduce cardiotoxicity in patients who receive cancer therapy, however, it's important to remember that cancer therapy is important in patients with cancer for their long-term survival and outcome. The concept of permissive cardiotoxicity, where a balance of benefit or effective cancer therapy with the acceptance of certain degree of cardiotoxicity, so long as the cardiotoxicity is monitored closely and treated optimally, and patients do not have life-threatening cardiotoxicity, to continue the cancer therapy to enable the long-term survival and outcome of cancer patients. This concept has to involve collaborative discussion between specialists treating the cancer patient and involve patient and family in terms of discussion, counselling and understanding of their treatment process. In conclusion, cardiovascular risk stratification, surveillance for cardiotoxicities and long-term cardiovascular care are important care components of cancer patients. This area of medicine is gaining importance as we recognize cardiotherapy-related cardiotoxicity in novel therapies that we are using for our cancer patient. There's also a growing number of cancer survivors with improvement in cancer treatment. Although this area of medicine has limited trials and evidence to base decision-making, but there are recent guidelines that have been developed to help provide guidance on a proactive and personalized approach to manage cardiovascular condition in cancer patients. It's important to remember that although reducing cardiotoxicity is important in this group of patients, but cancer therapies are life-saving and continuation are actually important for long-term survival and oncologic outcome. The concept of permissive cardiotoxicity should be considered to balance effective cancer treatment with acceptance of certain degree of cardiotoxicity while we provide surveillance and early treatment for cardiovascular consequences. The objective is to allow this group of patients with cancer to remain on the best possible cancer treatment to improve overall survival and outcome while minimizing cancer therapy-related cardiotoxicity. With that, thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Dr. Chan.